adductors. Yep, these uh, these complicated crazy muscles really drive me nuts and I have to say like they're beautiful and horrible all at the same time. They're this like crazy combination of being, um, you know, I'm the muscle anatomy geek who really geeks out about where these muscles are and what they do and how kind of complicated they are but at the same time, oh my god, they drive me nuts. And uh, today I want to explore some some interesting and new ways to work on them because these buggers can really be tricky. So in my efforts to not curse on YouTube, I'm calling these muscles buggers. Okay, so after you've gotten your client's leg nice and warmed up and you're making sure that they are letting go, which it's really hard to let go at the hip, so you know, lots of great ways to kind of shake the leg and move the leg around. Um, but one of my favorite ways to ensure that my client's letting go is doing this nice deep Thai stretch. This is a Thai massage technique that I love. I think it's really effective. Um, and I'm hooking their foot into my hip and then using one hand to stabilize the opposite side of their body and my other hand to apply pressure into the buggers as I um, lunge forward and create a nice deep stretch into the hip and apply some pressure and awareness into the adductors. From this position, I can really get a good sense of how much pressure I can apply into these buggers, but I don't wanna do that and strain my client's hip beyond what it's capable of doing. So I'm gonna use my right hand to really apply pressure, and I'm gonna use my left hand to kind of lift their opposite hip up and not push in opposition just to kind of allow their hips to move in a synchronized way and allow their low back to open up and this can just feel really relaxing and this is really effective for deep work into these muscles because they can become stressful so you want to make sure that your client is nice and relaxed. Getting into the more detailed work of these buggers, I want to either position their leg out as it's rested on my knee, which I actually prefer this position, but for the purposes of videoing, um, the other option is to actually move the bolster up a little bit so that as you laterally rotate their leg, their adductors are facing up towards the ceiling, giving you nice access to the detailed work that you can do. on the inner upper thigh is a really vulnerable area. If you think about it, keeping our legs closed is a very important part of um, keeping ourselves protected. So putting a client's leg into a lateral rotation and then really exposing this area can feel very scary. So make sure that you have got their trust and make sure you're working in a very safe manner. Make sure that your draping is extremely safe and protected. And then when you start working, make sure that you're working very slow. The best, most effective myofascial release happens with a nice, slow drag. Allow this to happen in this area. I spent the first handful of years in my profession being scared to talk to my clients during sessions. And of course, I'm not talking about chit chat about the weather or whatever else is going on, but really talk to them about what was going on with their muscles, with their tissue, and what I was feeling. And I find that the more I talk about what's happening in the moment, and the more I talk to somebody about the ability to let go, give them some kind of a, a visualization and a breath technique, the more effective my work is. And I definitely, hands down, feel like that is incredibly important in this area specifically.
muscle becomes hypertonic or eventually incurs a strain, you always want to think about the attachment site. And so the attachment site with these buggers are really tricky. The origin for all five of them is tucked underneath the pelvis, and so we don't go there. We don't access that. But what we can do is start to access the muscles that are deep in the hip, on the medial aspect of the hip, and get those tendinous fibers that become taut and, you know, electric guitar strings, just really, really cord-like and, and almost become immovable. So the best way to do this, I believe, is working over the drape, working over the sheet, making sure that they feel very, very tucked in. And as I work, I'm sinking in, communicating about them feeling safe, and just applying a little friction. And I feel like this really loosens things up because oftentimes this area is never even palpated. So starting to create change in here just involves a little bit of friction. That's all that's needed. often in my work. I think they are really effective for creating more relaxation and more length and the adductors are no exception. So after I've softened things up, I take the bolster away, place the client's leg back into lateral rotation, and then have them push up into my hand with their knee. And when they do that, hold it for five to eight seconds, and when they release, I can push down without the hindrance of the bolster there and that stretch is now really, really deep and effective. I apologize for the video quality on this clip, but I didn't want to leave it out because I think this technique is really cool and um, tends to leave a client feeling like their hip is super open. So I'm going to prop my client's leg up onto my shoulder and make sure that they're really rested on my shoulder and then I'm going to use my fingers to pull into the adductor tendons and pull towards me. And as they do, I'm going to use my body to push the leg up towards their midline. And it kind of softens everything, but at the same time pulling towards me at that hip. So it creates this oppositional pull and push and opens the hip on a very deep level. I can't in good conscience go without saying that you have got to lunge into this position. Really use your legs. Do not rely on your back. Make sure your abs are contracted and you're using your core. When you're done with that technique, keep their knee bent, push it over to the opposite side of their body. Medial rotation can really allow these adductors to now feel soft and set all of that good work you've just done into place. One last alternative I'm going to offer to work the adductors is to have your client in side lying position. So in this position, you want to have them bring their upper leg up and away from you in front of their body and I like to do this work with my client having clothes on it just feels a lot safer I don't have to worry about draping and I have access to the adductors now right in a position that I can do some nice deep work sinking in and having the table behind their leg to offer some oppositional pressure similar to what I was talking about before work slowly get that deep myofascial stretch and stay in communication This is a slightly easier position to start to work across the muscle fibers as opposed to with them. So nice twist myofascial stretch going from side to side so that you're getting a different release. An active release technique for the adductors looks like this. So finding that spot that feels tense, sinking in, having them contract those muscles so that they're lifting their leg up off the table and as they release, 
those buggers are really soft now and I can sink in on a nice deep level. Thank you guys so much for watching and subscribing and being a part of this amazing community of massage therapists. I would love to see the work that you do. So log on to Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, post some of your videos, post some of your ideas about how you work. I'd love to see it and hear it and share it with the world, or at least us. Thanks.